to make a meal so I can change and act strange. Get a Andre 3000 wig with some bangs. I'll hang and bang your frame like the Predator do. Tyler with a Kuo Performance and here today to talk about BAC water or bacteriostatic water. But before we get started, like, subscribe, comment, follow, all of the above. So getting into it, BAC water, or like I said, back water or bacteriostatic water, what exactly is it? Well, it's essentially a solution that's been used in medical practice for I don't know, probably decades and decades um, to help dissolve into or dissolve other uh, medical preparations, oftentimes things like peptides or hormones. Why would you use it other than just to dissolve? You could just use water for that. Well, it's got a micro antimicrobial agent in it, which is usually benzyl alcohol. Um, you, they do have other, uh, what you call sterile water vials that you can get, and it has a very a much shorter shelf life. So diving into the shelf life conversation, BAC water usually ha should have an expiration date on it, usually about two years. But once it's punctured, that goes down to about, that shelf life goes down to about 30 days. So you want to be mindful of that when you are using it. Now, going back to what I mentioned about the sterile water, which is also another option that you can use with some of these preparations dissolve. Sterile water has a much shorter uh, shelf life. So don't get that confused um, if you've got sterile water. It's, it's only you know, good for a couple days uh, before you have to toss it. So typically BAC water works a little bit better for some of your multi-use uh, related needs. Now, where are you gonna get it from? Well, if you live here in the US, uh, you can just go on amazon.com and they deliver to most states. There are a few states where they can't deliver to. And in those cases, why don't you guys just throw a comment down below uh, and I'll work to get you some links that you can use um, so that you don't have to deal with the issue with Amazon and, and some of the challenges they have. So um, moving right along. So what's an example? So an example right here is Cortexin. Um, you know, Cortexin is pretty simple. You just toss one milliliter of water into this vial. It's a 10 milligram vial. You're gonna roll it around nice and gently after that. You don't wanna shake it up because the peptides can be fairly fragile, um, but roll it around, let it collect or dissolve all of the powder that's on the side. And then once it's been able to effectively reconstitute for a few minutes, you withdraw it and then administer. Now, a little bit different. If you have got a multi-use file, and we'll throw a little video up just so that you can see, um, but in the video, probably what you're seeing is the individual is essentially withdrawing BAC water from one vial and then injecting it into the next vial that has a, the powder solution or the powder in it, and that will allow that powder to then dissolve. So with that, once it's been reconstituted in a multi-use vial, you know, again, we're not using, we're not talking about Cortexin here, that shelf life is reduced. So keep that in mind. Now, again, Cortexin is used in a single dose administration, so it doesn't, that conversation doesn't really apply to Cortexin. Now, once you've got it reconstituted, how do you use it? How do you administer it? Well, you've got two ways typically, which is gonna be your um, intermuscular or your subcutaneous. Subcutaneous is oftentimes used in a lot of studies uh, for different peptides just because a lot of times it improves patient adherence. It's less intimidating for patients if they can do a subcutaneous injection versus intermuscular. Now, that being said, Cortexin specifically is said by the manufacturer to use intermuscular. Through anecdotal feedback, I haven't heard any issues with subcutaneous versus intermuscular injections, so take that for what you will. Um, again, personally, no concern with using either, either or, but the, the recommendation per the manufacturer is intermuscular for Cortexin. Now, what do you expect to notice from a peptide? Well, it really depends on what peptide you're using. They're gonna have different targeted uses. Uh, so let's say, for example, one like BPC-157 combined with another peptide called TB-500 is oftentimes referred to as the Warfarin stack because of its, of its profound ability to increase the rate of tissue healing. Um, you, another one, Cortexin, for example, is a brain or CNS-based peptide. 
And it's not just a single peptide, it's a buffet of peptides and growth factors, uh, uh, essentially. So with that being said, you know, I'll, I'll throw something up here on screen so you can see what this Reddit user's anecdote was. But this individual essentially said that after several administrations, he noticed improvements in his sleep, waking up more refreshed. He also noticed that he was more alert. He had specifically called out when he's driving through traffic. Not only that, but typing speed improved, memory recall improved, uh, very specific to certain items he called out in his job. So while Reddit shouldn't be your sole source of information or drive you to make a decision on anything, it can at least help you understand the potential value that something may bring into your life or the potential pitfalls that something can bring into your life. So that being said, make sure to speak with a professional before using something like a peptide. Um, and in the meantime, if you need help better understanding what some different peptides do or specifically cortexin like we talked about today, don't hesitate to reach out to www.akuoperformance.com and click on the apply link. In the meantime, if cortexin interests you specifically, go to www.cosmicnotropic.com and you can use code Akuo, A-C-U-O underscore 10 for 10% off. Or you can just Google search Cosmic Nootropic Tyler Warren. It'll take you to my landing page there and you can click on the specific product there and it'll automatically apply the discount code. Until then, have a good one.